My name is Andy Holmes. I'm an author, and these are three books you need to read if you're going to be a writer. The first book is The Elements of Style, and this is by William Strunk and E.B. White, the same E.B. White who actually wrote Charlotte's Web. This book really helped me understand all the basic building blocks of writing, like grammar, punctuation, how the words work, and style. Me suggesting a grammar book can sound a little boring and dry, but think of it this way. If you're a painter and you have a picture in your mind of what you want your painting to look like, it might be amazing. It might be a totally original idea that nobody's ever seen. But if you don't know what types of paint to use, what kinds of brushes you need, what are the techniques to make that image uh, real, then you're just, you're gonna fail. Same thing goes for writing. When I first started out writing, I had ideas of stories I wanted to make, how I wanted them to read, messages I wanted to convey, and when I actually sat down and put pen to paper, I found that I didn't have enough command over the English language in my tools to pull it off. This book belongs on the top shelf of your writer's toolbox. As you can see, my copy's pretty beat up. I lost the dust jacket a long time ago, and that's because I use it all the time. And here's a couple gems from this book. Consciously or unconsciously, the reader is dissatisfied with being told only what is not. The reader wishes to be told what is. Hence, as a rule, it is better to express even a negative in positive form. Not honest, dishonest, not important, trifling. Vigorous writing is concise. A sentence should contain no unnecessary words, a paragraph no unnecessary sentences. For the same reason that a drawing should have no unnecessary lines and a machine no unnecessary parts. This requires not that the writer make all sentences short or avoid all detail and treat subjects only in outline, but that every word tell. I don't care how comfortable you feel with words and English and punctuation and grammar. The bottom line is, if you haven't studied this book, you have not mastered the English language and you don't understand all of the vital tools and how they can be used to write. The second book I recommend you read as a writer is a book called Story by Robert McKee. This book's actually more geared towards screenwriters, but it is a must read for anyone writing stories in any medium. Here's an excerpt. A rule says you must do it this way. A principle says this works and has through all remembered time. The difference is crucial. Your work needn't be modeled after the well-made play. Rather, it must be well-made within the principles that shape our art. Anxious, inexperienced writers obey rules. Rebellious, unschooled writers break rules. Artists master the form. Story is all about story structure and story form. This book reverse engineers movies and famous stories we've all seen and boils them down to their most basic parts. This book has diagrams and charts laying out story structure and the basic elements all strong stories need, like conflict and conflict resolution. To make these concepts clear, it breaks down familiar stories like Rocky, Star Wars, The Seven Samurai, Forrest Gump, and a dozen others. Even though this, this, book, even though this book isn't strictly focused on fiction, it's more about screenwriting, it gave me a lot of tools so I could control story, so I could weave storylines and it really made me feel like I was in the driver's seat of the plots that I was writing. The third book that you need to read if you want to be a writer is On Writing by Stephen King. I first read this book when I was uh, just starting out as a writer at 19, and I must have read it five times since then. As you can see, my copy's totally worn out and full of sticky notes and tabs from all my favorite excerpts. The first half of the book is sort of a memoir about Stephen King's life and how he got into writing and how he was shaped as a writer. The second half deep dives into his writing process from start to finish. I'm a huge Stephen King fan and it's definitely worth reading some of his more popular novels before reading this book. It's not a must, but it helps because he breaks down his entire process on specific novels of how he wrote them in this book. He's got a lot of commentary on the industry and just the craft itself, which I found really interesting. For me, my favorite part of this book is when King talks about where he gets his ideas from and how he develops them in his writing process of developing and creating a whole story from a single what if question. After I finished reading this book, I felt a lot stronger as a writer because honestly, I just felt inspired to start writing more. 
and I also felt more oriented to the tools and things I'd be using to craft good stories. Here's one of my favorite excerpts from the book. At its most basic, we are only discussing a learned skill. But do we not agree that sometimes the most basic skills can create things far beyond our expectations? We are talking about tools and carpentry, about words and style. But as we move along, you do well to remember that we are also talking about magic. Before I read this book, I mean, I read it when I was really young. I felt like I was looking for a permission slip. Like I was waiting for someone to come up to me and go, okay, now you can be a writer. And after I read this, I felt like Stephen King walked up to me and handed me my permission slip. As you can see, like the, I, the pages of this thing are falling out. This is a book that if you're a writer, you will read over and over and over again. So those are the three books I recommend you read if you wanna be a writer. If you decide to get copies of these books, please click on the links below in the description. It really helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check back because I post new videos every week. And don't forget to head on over to www.andywritestories.com to check out some of my work. I'll see you next time.